Good morning, Cross Church family. This is Brandon Bowen, one of your elders, back again with you for one of our Monday morning devotionals. As always, I pray that this morning finds you blessed and in great health and ready to charge into a new week. If you were with me last time, uh, and I certainly hope you were, <laughs> but you might remember that I spoke on routines and how the structure and the regularity of routines can be very important to our spiritual lives. But today I'm going to kind of flip that on its head, topic-wise anyway, and talk about change. And I'm not talking about the change in your piggy bank or the change that my granddad loved to jingle in his pocket while he stared out the picture window in his living room. And no, I'm talking about the only constant in our lives other than death and taxes. And change is that constant. It seems we are constantly besieged by our world of change around us. You know, ranging from events and trends that deeply concern us for the future. You know, things that should have us hitting our knees in prayer, like what's going on in Israel right now. Uh, you know, to things that make us shake our heads and or roll our eyes. You know, whatever the, the latest TikTok dance craze is. But... I know that the older I get, maybe the more I be, I've i started to understand what it has been like for my grandparents and my parents over the years, uh, folks who have truly witnessed change on massive scales from year to year and decade to decade. But I want to bring you some encouragement this morning as, you know, as you look up from that news feed that's full of change and fun stuff. First of all, concerning the future and looking forward and just, you know, being wary of, of what's coming down the pike, what kind of change we're going to have to go through. I would encourage you to read John 16, 1 through 15, and understand that even as dramatic change may come, and it will, we have the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, who was sent to guide us and to give us peace because he will put us on the right path. He will show us what we need to do in those moments of change that are yet to come. <clears throat> but I mainly want to fall back on the parable of the wise and foolish builders. Uh, we, we find this in, in two books in Matthew and in Luke. And I'm going to go with Luke today because I really like what he had to say about this. Um, as he recorded in chapter 6, 46 through 48, where Christ says, where he quotes Christ as saying, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words, and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. Verse 49, But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed, and its destruction was complete. In Matthew, he says it, it, it falls down with a crash. There's a noise associated with it. But I chose the passage from Luke because there's several takeaways in here uh, that I think are very important. I'm, I'm sure there's dozens more. And we've all heard this parable probably a million times. But the, several things struck me. And first, by referring to digging down to find rock. Think about that actual act of digging. Uh, it reminded me that while his grace was free, it's going to take effort and real desire to follow him. We're going to have to do some real work in our lives in order to fully adopt his ways. You notice he doesn't just say, hey, wander around until you find a patch of bare rock. No, we are reminded to dig deep. And I think it's kind of a metaphor for digging deep within ourselves 
to do the business that we need to do with him to become grounded fully in Christ. And secondly, in regard to what is being cleared out of the way in this parable, uh, my father taught me, uh, as a mining geologist, he taught me a, lo a lot of things. Uh, and in particular about surface deposits of ore, whatever it may be. And the things that lie between us here and where that deposit is. And it's the true of any kind of excavation, not just in mining, whether you're, you're, clearing, you're clearing something out uh, to build a foundation or you're on an archaeological dig. Whatever it is that's between you and your target strata is called overburden. And just let that word sink in for a minute because I don't believe there is a more appropriate word to also describe the junk in our lives that lays between us and a firm down, uh, firm foundation. It is spiritual overburden. And while I'd like to say I'm just pitching shovelfuls of harmless sand out of my way, like a scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark, I know it's more like I'm picking through a landfill where I need to focus on not just casting things aside, but illuminating them for good. And the third thing, and I'm going to ask a question, finally, why rock? I think the easy answer is, you know, we can all agree um, that there's obvious stability that it offers as an anchor for a foundation. You know, you lay down a foundation and you can literally anchor it to that rock. So it was a perfect analogy that, uh, that put it in practical terms, not just for followers in the first century, but even for us today, that it's, it would be an obvious thing to choose if you were going to put down a foundation. But going a little deeper, I also believe it was also about the perceived notion that rock is not just solid, but forever, unchanging and immovable. So let me leave you with this today. When change is coming, and we know it, there's no getting around it, it's just going to happen. But with the Spirit to guide us, and Christ as our immutable anchoring rock, we will weather the storm. Because He is forever. He is that unchanging, immovable, immutable rock that is going to stand through all, through everything, no matter what the change is. And so I will leave you with Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I encourage you to lean on him, to dig down, to find that rock, to put our foundation on at all times. That means we got to get out a broom or a shovel and sweep something out of the way, shovel something out of the way, and do real business with him, so be it. But uh, he will be with you through it all because he is that rock. Thank you so much, and I pray you have a great week. Bye-bye.